So which of the following describes the anatomic pathway of the ilioinguinal nerve? So now we've switched around the other side of the body here. So very wordy questions here. But what this does, it pierces the oblicus internus and accompanies a spermatic cord around ligament through the superficial inguinal ring. And the reason why this is important or asked on here is we don't want to dissect into that inguinal ring. So if we're doing our fantasteel approach, if we're doing our stop approach, we don't want to extend uh, laterally as we continue um, trying to struggle through this here because that nerve is going to be injured. Ilioinguinal here. Um, Again, it's an anterior approach and it involves anterior uh, fracture lines, involves anything you need to get to from the front here. It's a tried and true method. It's a potentially a big approach using all the windows here, but uh, is important. Uh, on most tests here, they're going to associate ilioinguinal or even stopa with most both column injuries. But if you have a question between all of these here, look at where the displacement is. If the displacement is more anterior or posterior, lean in that direction if you have no idea. Again, anything in the front is where you can go with an anterior approach. Lots of risks to this one here. Um, you can you access and really isolate a lot of neurovascular structures, so a lot of these are important here. The femoral vessels and external iliac vessels are very important. You actually protect these throughout the procedure. Uh, damage will cause thrombosis. Uh, probably not a great idea to any major blood vessel feeding the limb. Uh, lymphatics can be involved even without you knowing about this, especially if you're not careful protecting the sheath around the vessels here because that's where the limb vessels live. Cause edema to the limb. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh is often involved in people who have neuralgia parasthetica. So tell the patients ahead of time they're more than likely going to have this here, and that's been asked before here. Our epigastric spermatic cords, uh, a bigger the approach means you have more chance of HO, and then obturator nerve injury with uh, aberrant retraction or placement of anything will cause obturator nerve injury, just like it would with a stop approach, and that will cause your medial thigh to go numb. Next question, uh, a 74-year-old man falls, sustaining the injury shown in figures A through C. In surgical planning, what is the best surgical approach to treat this injury? So we have an AP in our Jude films here. Again, with the arrows, we can start, we'll start from the left and work backwards. Why not? So our anterior column is involved as seen on our obturator oblique here in figure C. So we can tell at least that's involved. And then as we look on figure B, I can see somewhat of a fracture line here being involved. Doesn't show up at least very well on my screen where that fracture line exits, but I really don't see anything massively displaced in the back. Um, and now in figure A, I see that the head is somewhat more medialized than the other side. Our iliopectineal line here is disrupted, uh, not a ton, but is. And then I can see down here, which makes me wonder if this is more of a T variant with the inferior pubic rami involvement. So this is an ilioinguinal approach. I mentioned before about not going in between stop and ilioinguinal because you can sometimes fix the same uh, fracture pattern with the, either of those approaches there. So if the fracture's in the front, the displacement's in the front, you probably want to go in the front. So T-type acetabulum, there we go. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is important because you may ding this and you need to tell the patients that ahead of time. Uh, again, these are all on the website, so you can look at these there if I'm going fast or if you have any further questions on this. So the ilioinguinal starts just proximal to the symphysis pubis and extends laterally along the front of the uh, abdomen there. So you can see it's above the symphysis, so we can see down into the pelvis at least a little bit there, and it continues and wraps around almost like a continuation of what your stopper approach was all the way over to the lateral window. Very similar, for at least for skin. Superficial dissection here, again, lots of words. You can go over this on your own here. Important after you open the inguinal canal, um, you need to um, don't do this haphazardly. Pay attention to this here. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh is sitting in there. Spermatic cord, round ligament, probably not a good thing to injure as well. We need to retract those there. Uh, you can leave a cuff for later repair uh, as well. As you go deeper in here, space of retius returns with vengeance, and we want to make sure we put some sort of retractor in there, whether it be a malleable, a sponge and malleable, whatever it may be, so we don't hit this here. Our um, iliopectineal fascia 
is again a testable topic where you do need to incise that fascia to get into the true pelvis there. And deep, the three windows here are important to know, uh, something to memorize before the test, uh, even if you don't do these here. The medial, lateral, and uh, middle windows here are different what the contents of these windows are, as well as where the borders of the windows are. have both been tested here. Um, and then working through these three windows is where you can access the pelvic brim, the rami, the quadrilateral surface here, and as you continue laterally into the ilium itself, all from the anterior aspect. So here's a pen rose around the vessels. Uh, if you see a pen rose in any of these, uh, oftentimes it's a larger approach, uh, like the ilioinguinal, you won't use these vessels, or excuse me, these, uh, anything to retract something on a different, uh, for example, the coker during a posterior approach. Drains can be placed as with any of these here. The larger uh, the approach is, the more often these are used. You can repair your rectus down. You don't repair your iliopectineal fascia, which remember you had to cut through to get into inside your true pelvis there. Inguinal canal is repaired, not over tightened, so you don't strangulate any of those uh, structures. So while dissecting in the middle window of the ilioinguinal approach, a nerve is encountered entering the obturator foramen. Excessive retraction in the structure would result in which of the following? So it's almost a two-point or two-part question where you need to know what the structure is and what that structure does here. So we just talked about what uh, goes into the obturator foramen there, and uh, with the stopper approach, it's the same structure here on this approach here. So your medial thigh is going to go numb with your obturator nerve. It's the largest nerve from your lumbar plexus. It goes through your psoas and then goes uh, along the uh, lesser pelvis, along the lateral side, and then it exits inferiorly, anteriorly into the obturator foramen. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.